And we're joined now by Colonel Tomasz Mijinski, Senior Fellow, Kazimierz Pulaski Foundation. Welcome to the program. Good evening. Thank you for having me here. Now, I want to start with a bit of a background because you yourself actually have been a really key person very much on that transition for Poland, you know, making sure that those F-16s were implemented, that the infrastructure was ready. So it's quite a journey. Let's start a little bit with that on that journey for Poland and getting to that NATO standard. Walk us through that and how far we've come and are we at that position where Poland needs to be to be ready for anything in case of uh, anything goes bad in the alliance? Of course, uh, back then it was uh, 2003 when we signed the contract for a 48 F-16 being delivered to Poland. We were the first country from the Soviet bloc that changed from the Soviet post-Soviet aircraft uh, to the Western technology. That was a huge leap for uh, Poland from many standpoints, for uh, operational standpoint, maintenance standpoint, logistics, uh, infrastructure as well. So Poland spent our billions of dollars just to prepare ourselves to operate F-16 and be in the place we are right now. So now the Polish pilots are taking care, taking part in the many international exercises with the recent successes in the Tiger Air Meet, for example, that they proved they are combat ready, uh, they are well trained, and uh, of course there are perspectives in front of the uh, F-16 program in Poland as well. That's from an operational standpoint, but of course uh, there is another side of the house which is logistics and maintenance, and uh, in this portion there are some, uh, I would say. Uh, I didn't say the issue, but uh, we still rely mostly on the on the U.S. on the U.S. companies. So majority of the equipment, the majority of the services, we are still relying on the U.S. companies, based on the uh, multi, uh, international agreements, um, with, uh, gover government to government agreements, and of course there are some limited capabilities located in the Polish defense industry, WZL2, the, the same company, just that just today signed a contract with the KAI for FA-50 maintenance, but they tried to be involved in F-16 from the very beginning with some uh, limited capabilities developed so far. So there is a lot of things to do to implement the Polish defense industry uh, into F-16 maintenance. Uh, but still, in terms of logistics, uh, of course, there are some private companies that are also involved in sustainment because the the market responded to the needs uh, when the military decided to go for a local market to procure some spare parts or repair services. So there are there are companies in Poland that are capable to private companies in Poland that are capable to support mm -hmm. uh, the F-16. All in all, uh, I would say that the, the system is, uh, is 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 kind of well supported and uh, we see in the sky. But that was the there was a huge challenge from the beginning. Now we would also like to ask you about the FA-50 that. Poland purchased from South Korea. Now, can you tell us more about that particular aircraft? Um, what kind of an aircraft is it? I mean, the aircraft was originally designed as a training aircraft. So the original was the T-50 Golden Eagle, and it was developed jointly with the Lockheed Martin company, which is a manufacturer also of F-16. So there's a lot of commonalities, but we call it like a little F-16. Uh, it, ha it has uh, limited capabilities. Uh, they can carry similar weapon systems, weapon munitions like the original F-16, but basically it's a totally different aircraft when it comes to application. And uh, basically it's a uh, couple of years ago, we also procured M346 trainer. And uh, this one, uh, the FA-50 has uh, extended capabilities because uh, besides of training, he can also uh, provide the, the missions, the, like the combat missions or air policing, uh, uh, mission. So it's like a, the, the the twelve that were delivered. We call it gap filler because uh, they are in the configuration that that is something between the, the the existing and the and the future configuration. And hopefully the remaining thirty two will be equipped with the newer weapon system. And they may they may take over some of the MiG twenty nine and also maybe some of the F sixteen uh, duties uh, in the Polish sky. Now, I want to follow up on that because you've just said that these are so-called gap fillers used as training aircraft, um, very much trying to replace certain things, calling it a totally 
different aircraft. Now, we have also uh, a report uh, that was released, I believe, around April from the Polish press agency, and they're very much there saying that the FA-50 light fighter jets that Poland bought from South Korea were actually grounded, not in service, for several months. So we had that statement from the Ministry of Defense. So uh, how much of a concern is this? Is this a uh, part of, let's say, a bigger problem that if we have other purchases from South Korea, potentially, that we just can't service these air uh, planes? Is it an interoperability issue? Uh, how do you see this uh, from this report from April? I mean, the, what, what I've heard, that it, there was only the, pro, the formal and the, some kind of legal problem with allowing some of the equipment being used uh, in Poland or within the European Union. Uh, they, it required some additional certificates, uh, additional paperwork to be done to, to, to operate this aircraft. It was not really a problem with the aircraft itself, but both was related with the, some paperwork, some formal, formal, formalities. And of course, we have to remember that uh, this is Korean aircraft. Korea is not a part of the NATO, it's not a part of the European Union. So there are special requirements, especially in the European Union, uh, that has to be met uh, that are not required for, in, uh, in Korea. And uh, that was it was solved because also last year the, the Polish Military Airworthiness Authority signed like an agreement uh, between them and the Korean Military Airworthiness uh, Authorities about the mutual recognition of the certain certificates and uh, and the paperwork. That's why mm -hmm. uh, it takes but some with time. All, but with all uh, that said, do you think it was a good decision uh, for Poland to purchase uh, these aircrafts? I mean, it depends. Of course, the Poland required about one 160 combat aircraft uh, to be kind of self-sufficient when it comes to air defense. And uh, with this, uh, of course, uh, with the situation on the east, uh, I can understand that there has to be a quick decision and and we were able to buy whatever was available at the time. And the only aircraft was available at the time that can be purchased and somehow meet and uh, fill the gap between, after the mid-29 were, were, were sent uh, to our friends. Uh, that, was, that was the only decision. And uh, of course, from the operational point of view, it has to ask the, some operators, pilots, uh, how, they, how they consider the, the, the aircraft uh, in comparison to F-16. Uh, and uh, and the mid 29 from the logistics standpoint of course the the logistics can play a huge role because uh, of course korea is far east so so of course the, all the logistic transportation uh, and the customs uh, issues they may they may arise but i believe we can cope with it and also thanks to the the, the agreement between wzl2 and the korean aerospace industry it can also solve some, solve some problems mm -hmm. uh, related with the logistics so mm -hmm. all in all i believe the since we have them, uh, we should make sure that they are fully operational and, uh, and uh, the Polish defense industry can provide uh, sufficient support. Yeah. I think just uh, that was also a question we posed to another guest about this interoperability um, that you've just said, you know, that it's not a NATO member, South Korea is different. You said it's a problem of paperwork. Let's hope it's that. Let's hope it's not too much paperwork. But my question is more also moving into the future, not just at looking at these South Korean planes, but also looking at the F-35s. Uh, which are also due to be very important and play a role there. Um, how do you assess this? Because we also are, are waiting for their arrival. I mean, this is also, this is of course a NATO standard. This is different. Um, in the mix of that, do we see Poland potentially moving more towards uh, purchasing more of the, the F-35s, more American made? Is it gonna balance that with South Korea? Are there other countries potentially where Poland is looking at? How do you see the future of uh, the Air Force for Poland? For sure, based on the recent uh, procurements, we still need uh, two squadrons uh, of uh, tactical aircraft. And of course, we have to look from the from the very bottom to the high. We have an aircraft that can operate on the lower altitude, which is the F-50, F-16, uh, F-35. But we don't have an aircraft who can uh, provide the air superiority. So aircraft that operates very high can be response to the to the any threats from the east. So we are talking uh, air superiority aircraft. It can be FA-50, uh, Eurofighter, Typhoon. So that kind of aircraft. Well, of course, there is a F F-22, but it's not for sale, I would say. It's a, it's a restricted technology. But uh, between those two, like F-15 F F and uh, the Eurofighter Typhoon, that will, be, that will be something that is really missing uh, in our def air de and defense system. And of course, uh, since we have a lot of Euro uh, American equipment, uh, maybe it's good to consider a cooperation with some European providers like a Eurofighter, Typhoon, uh, uh, 
producers that basically is a pan american uh, product mm -hmm. so uh, there are many countries involved so i see chances for the polish defense to be also part of it it's it maybe it's more open to to cooperate uh, on such aircraft uh, in the within the polish uh, defense industry and they are looking far for the future of course there are some uh, pan american pan, pan european programs for a next generation sixth generation aircraft and now there are discussions between country because today there is no country in, in europe that can uh, develop that kind of equipment by themselves so of course there is a consortium of, of companies that are trying to develop the new generation aircraft and this is good time to join this because having uh, being in the program at the very beginning it gives us some more uh, opportunities to develop our uh, our industry with the existing fleet of course it's, it's like the F f35 basically the the, the all the keg is shared so there is no much room for a new new buyers uh, and the f35 f f also kind of restricted uh, technology and uh, the all the logistic system is is uh, controlled by the by the US now <clears throat> because the fa50 is um, well is produced in South Korea maintenance of them here in Poland is very difficult now the um, agreement that is going to be signed between Poland and South Korea is this going to change um, the situation when it comes to maintenance and service uh, that is the good uh, direction chosen by the Polish government and the WZL2, of course, uh, but this is long run. Uh, last year, WZL2 and KAI signed like a, like a letter of intent, I would say. Now is the next step, the teaming agreement. It's not the executive agreement. There is no money besides it. There is no any, any exact work to be done on the aircraft. It's another step to develop the capabilities. On the teaming agreement, mostly they agreed on some uh, areas of interest and the scope of work that has to be Perform, but in order to prepare the company to maintain the aircraft and the modern jet aircraft, the, of course, it has to be access to the technical documentation. We shouldn't be a problem since they signed the contract with the aircraft manufacturer, but they also procure uh, required support equipment, test equipment, tooling. They have to train the personnel, uh, <laughs> set up a new maintenance procedure, establish a supply chain with the Koreans uh, and the maybe US companies that are manufacturing spare parts for uh, Colonel, for if, if I could just long, interject long really, really move. quickly, we're coming towards the end, but I, I am curious because you mentioned um, about this air superiority on a higher altitude. We also mentioned some type of aircraft, including the Eurofighter. Now, uh, these consortium, these uh, projects that usually have various nations involved, I mean, the Eurofighter itself, uh, not the ideal aircraft. I remember certain delays, uh, certain technical issues. Is that the right aircraft for the job? Is this maybe because, I mean, the Americans are not bogged down by so many suppliers. I mean, this is always the problem if we have various nations have these projects. Is the Eurofighter enough for this, or do we foresee maybe um, that that's more of a liability? Just briefly at the end. Okay, so of course, uh, there are many countries that are still utilizing uh, FA-50 in combination with F-35, for example. There are examples in, 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 in Europe, uh, and it's, it's all worldwide in the different countries as well. So, of course, this is something to be considered. Uh, everything has to be discussed. Uh, uh, but I believe at least it should be considered. I am not, I'm not saying this is good or bad choice, but, but this is something that has to be investigated and well considered. All right. So we'll have to carry on that conversation another time. Thank you so much for that. That was the insight about all things Air Force between uh, what's happening in Poland and Korea and beyond. Colonel Tomasz Mijinski, thank you so much.